Well, there you go. Okay. <laughs> Seven to 17. Thank you. GSR is for scouts age 11 to 17 and um, Camp Carpenter is scouts age 6 to 10. Um, Hannah, just, uh, I just had a question about captions. Let me see if I can turn that on for you. Um, so if you have questions, it might be mo most helpful to ask the whole group and not just me privately. Um, YouTube uh, videos will be uploaded. Uh, my guess would be by middle of the week. Um, I am not sure how to add captions at the moment. If someone can help me, I'm happy to do that. Is anybody able to tell me how to add captions? Because that was a request I just had and I've not had to do that before. And so I apologize. Oh, I got a good thing I was already in there. All right, give me one, just one second. Uh, Welcome, welcome, welcome to those of you who are just joining us. Please change your um, name to include which camp you'd like to join for the breakout session. All right, I think I have them turned on. If not, I will go forward and fix that moving forward. Thank you. Um, Garrett, you have a direct question for you. All right, I'm gonna get us started. Hello all, I am Allison Fady. I'm the Director of Camping and Program for Daniel Webster Council. We are so excited to be here um, to kick off our 2023 camping year. Um, tonight I am Gratefully joined by Brett Branscombe, uh, Camp Director for Camp Carpenter, and his full-time uh, counterpart, Brett, Brendan Adams, who is the Outdoor Specialist for Camp Carpenter, um, who will answer your questions in the off-season. I'm also joined by Drew Rudlewski, Reservation Director for GSR, um, and his full-time counterpart, Outdoor Specialist for GSR, Garrett Boyd, um, as well as Scott Rodriguez from GSR uh, staff as well. And last but certainly not least, Phil Donovan, the uh, VP of Camping from our Board of Directors. So thank you all for being here and joining us tonight. Um, I have a, uh, several, we'll say, 
um, housekeeping things. The first thing is that we have a new system that will allow group registration that I'm happy to demonstrate for you tonight. Um, I'll do that momentarily. Uh, a couple of not as exciting things. Uh, we can no longer accept checks. Um, the problem, with, there's a couple of reasons. Uh, it is a lot to track them. They, they get mailed into the office and they get touched like three or four times before they get inputted to a system. If they're for GSR, they get mailed up to camp and they have to get collected and then put into the system. And there's a lot of ways that they can be lost. Um, and I don't know, not everybody does this, but some people show up at camp with their final payment in hand. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, arrival day at camp is a little hustle and bustly. And that's an easy, really, a really easy way for a check to get lost and just not tracked well. So we will not be accepting checks up front. I mean, sorry, we will not be accepting checks in general. However, our new system should be able to accept an electronic check if that's how your unit chooses to pay. Um, and the new system will also allow for deposits and payments over time. Um, it will definitely allow group registrations, but you'll have uh, the choice. Each unit will have the choice to decide if uh, the one person is paying for the whole unit or if each individual person is paying their fee. Um, so I will, and we are, I will show you that in just one second. Uh, our, there's one slight change to our refund policy. Uh, refunds, uh, you may receive a refund if you um, send it in writing. And that's, I would do that by email when you do it on paper. Again, camp has a hard place for paper, easy place for paper to get lost. Um, so I would send an email to the camp director or to myself, letting us know that you're looking for a refund. Um, if you do that two weeks before camp arrival, then you will receive the refund minus the deposit. Deposits are always non-refundable. Um, if you need to cancel for camp within two weeks, there needs to be a medical reason in order to receive a refund. Um, however, once a person arrives at camp, there is no refund. Um, that's just too much for us to manage. Once people have arrived, we've already put the money out for you to be at camp. Um, and that's why we can't offer a refund after that. Um, I know one of the big things that you all might be wondering about will be what will the camp fees be for 2023? Um, we can't share those yet. We'll be able to share them at our December 18th meeting because the board has to approve them and the board plans to approve them on the 12th. And then we'll be able to share those out um, at our meeting on the 18th. Um, the campership form will be available on January 1st this year so that we can um, meet those people's needs uh, as early as possible. And we will, I will be working with the Camp Card fundraiser and Bianca to make sure that the dates line up nicer. Last year, you had to turn in your camp cards on the same day that your final camp payment was due. And that's not fair. Um, and that was unintentional. So we will be um, working together so that the deposit dates and the camp card dates are all lined up so that everything so you have time to know if you've earned a free day a week at camp or things like that one other um housekeeping piece is that uh the fourth sunday in december is the day after it was actually christmas day so we won't be meeting that day so we'll be meeting december 18th instead um i will change the if you've signed up for all of the meetings going forward um, i will change that meeting date to 12 18. And then the fourth Sunday in May is Labor Day weekend. And so we are gonna back that one up by one week and make it uh, May 21st. Again, I will make the changes in the system. You don't have to remember that, um, but you do wanna keep track of it so you can join us on time. Uh, and on May 21st, we will all sing Drew happy birthday. Um, <laughs> all right, so let me show you our new system. I'm really excited. Um, I've been part of the team that's been building this system for almost a year now. <clears throat> Um, sleepaway camp uh, is not available in the system yet, but that's okay. It will be. Um, it was intentional. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and then I will get us going. So I'm going to just move my bar out of the way. So under experiences, you'd go to overnight camp. Oops, overnight camp. But for this purpose, it's just so you can see it. We'll go to day camp. And then we scroll down and we ch select a location um, and we choose, I'm going to choose Manchester and I'm going to choose six to 10 years old. Um, because this is a day camp, there is day camp at in Manchester for kids 11 to 14, but I'm just choosing six to 10 right now. 
And the only camp that's going to pop up in here for us is our STEM camp and our winter camp. Um, STEM is the week of our uh, Southern New Hampshire's April vacation and winter is the uh, week of February vacation. So I just select, uh, choose, hit select, and I hit select again. And here's where you have a choice, uh, or first choice. If you're registering one attendee or if you're reg registering multiple attendees. If you're registering multiple attendees, you're gonna go here, and then this is your next choice, whether or not you as a unit are going to pay and make the reservation and pay for everyone, or if you're going to invite attendees to join. Um, in the invite attendees to join, I would create a, um, I, can move back. I would create a system, and create um, an invitation list. So I'm gonna select this one. Um, I got to, like I said, I've been working on this system for a long time. Um, so I was able to build a list. Uh, so you fill in your information. Oh, thank you. Um, and then it will, so I'm going to show you my list. Just I'm not going to hit send email invitations um, because those people will now, this is a live system now. So those people will actually get uh, emails. So I don't want to invite them. Um, Apparently I cannot show it to you. Maybe if I edit it, there we go. Um, and so these are some emails and some people that I would involve in my troop or my pack, okay? So that's the one way, one way you could do it. And then the other way to do it, just have to back up a minute. Is that I'll make the reservation for all attendees and pay for everyone. And then, so it's the same set of, um, so I would be able to put in all of my adults, all of my youth. Um, at the bottom, it will tell you, or right here somewhere, oh, they took it off. Um, you can add chaperones, you can add adults, so I should, and then you can add youth. Um, chaperones are gonna be your free, your two free adults. And then adults are gonna be anyone else joining. Um, and then you can add youth. And then you save and continue, and then you you hit select, and I'd fill this in again. And this would be all set, and then I would review my order. Ooh, I spelled my own kid's name wrong in there. Did anybody else catch that? Um, and I would add that to the cart. And then I'd be able to pay or set a deposit. Um, at, and so it's already set up to do installment payments. Um, you don't have to do it quite that way. The, the Sleepaway Camp program will have um, a deposit required at first, and then will allow you to set up what the rest of your payments will be. So see there, there are questions. Are prior year's attendees imported to this new system? Um, you'll have to, so you'll only have to import them once, um, and but they will not come out of double knot. Um, double knot, and this is this system was built specifically for us, um, and so you'll have to put them in once. Also, if you have your summer camp group, and then there's, uh, you can use this now to buy uh, adventure days on Saturdays at, uh, during Granite Base Camp. You can buy group um, adventure days now. So that's the. Um, Sorry, I'm getting distracted. I need to not read the chat. Um, so it's a group for it's a group sales a module for everything. So you'll only you can have like your camp group, and then if you come for something else on a different day, you can have a specific group for that day too. Um, I'm just gonna go up and read some of the chat stuff. Um, if we do the way that each family pays, will the admin for the troop be able to track who is not paid um, and assist in collections to prior to the week of camp? Yes, we're working on having a dashboard for unit leaders that will have whether their med forms have been turned in, whether they've signed up for advancement at GSR and where they're at with payment, whether or not it's paid or not. We won't necessarily uh, tell you as a unit leader if they've paid everything, um, just whether or not they have money left over. Um, can you set it up so that the pack pays for some attendees and other pays for themselves? No, you have to decide when, one way or the other. <clears throat> will there be a 3% convenience fee for, for credit cards? Um, Yes, that's the short answer. Um, and that's why we are also giving the e-check option so that you can make a decision on how those fees are covered. Mm -hmm. 
Can you do the deposit as a pay for the entire group then switch? No. When den chiefs fall, oops. Will, oops. Will den chiefs fall under chaperones or youth? Youth. Anyone under the age of 18 is a youth. Um, but it occurs to me that we will have to add that as a category, den chiefs as a category. Uh, so I can take that back to the development team. Is there an e-check fee? Yes, it's 1%. Do you have to add everyone at once? No, you can add people as you go. Um, how and well will camp card earnings be applied? Should we or will we need to hold off if we believe a free week will be earned? So I would um, book them and deposit them so you have the spot. Um, and then we can the what will happen is when they receive a free week at camp, they'll receive an, a gift card for the amount that they get for free. So they'll be able, you'll you or they will be able to go in and put that on it. Um, will we be able to see med forms as leaders once they are submitted? No. So the reason that for that is that this is uh, the system that we are using is a HIPAA compliant system. And we are not authorized to share that information with anyone else. As leaders, you are probably traveling with your kids fairly often. Um, and so you should have or seen your med forms as ahead of time. Um, how are venture crew members age 18 to 21 handled? Um, they're registered as adults once they're over 18. Everyone registers as an adult once they're over 18. So in terms of this purpose, you're asking about campers versus adult leaders, yes? Yes. Yep. Uh, and so we will have to, that's another piece that we didn't, that I can add for the developers. Is the new system replacing booking at? Uh, yes. Um, so uh, Polina's question was about nhscouting.org slash Camp Carpenter. Um, that's just the booking system that, that is there. Everything else about Camp Carpenter will stay there. Um, and the now that the system is live, once it is live for resident camp, it will shift, the, the link will shift. So you can go to the same place to get to your registration. The correct link will be put there eventually. Uh, Uh, John, I'm not sure. Uh, I was told that an e-check was one dollar. Um, I don't know if National has a different setup or a different deal for that. Um, I will clarify and get back to you. Um, very technically, yes. The well, the med forms have to be signed by a parent. So if you, if you as a leader submit them, then they are not technically uh, signed by the parent. I, I was able to do it last year, getting it signed by the parent, but submitting them all myself. That uh, we got that to where I, I just want to make sure that the system will allow me to do that. Yep, the system. So what you see functionally on your end will not change this year. Okay. For Medforms. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Um, and to be clear about Medforms, we are sticking, like I said, with the same system. I do recommend that as a leader, you bring your paper forms that you've already had with you just in case. Because, you know, parent might tell you you've done it there, you know, there's system issues that could, there's many reasons to why you should have in your car, your folder of your paper forms. Um, yes, correct. There is no way to pay that does not incur a 1% fee or a 3% fee. or a fee for an e-check. I am not sure if it's a 1% or a $1. Um, uh, Polina, yes, I've asked that we have a, a dashboard that you'll be able to see that the forms have been turned in or not turned in. Leaders need a way to confirm metaforms have been submitted by parents. Yep. So you'll have a, you'll, I'm working on having a dashboard that you'll be able to see that they've been turned in. Uh, not, not this year. We do not intend on integrating. Sorry, the question is, is the new system going to be integrated with last year's merit badge advancement system at GSR? 
not currently. Um, however, uh, for those of you who don't know, our developer for the Merit Badge Advancement System is Taewon Jin, who is in this on this call and should be thanked amazing uh, amazing amounts because he has made our weekly merit badges that we teach online um, so much more efficient, and we are super grateful for that. The system was awful last year. Uh, the online registration system, David. Is that what you're saying? Uh, I, we agree, which is why we have worked very hard to build a new one. We've been working on it for more than a year. Uh, oh, the Medford system. Uh, there's not much I can do with that. Um, the system that was built in a tool called JotForm. Um, it was built for us by an outside agency so that the form looks exactly the same when we print it. It looks like the, the med form um, as if we printed off the PDF and did it on paper um, so that we could meet our, um, the requirements for the BSA. Um, Brendan or anyone, if you would like to email me your, the things that were challenging for you, uh, we do have a little bit of time to make changes. Um, I can put my email in the chat now. You all got an email from me when you registered too, but um, I will tell you uh, that unfortunately because of the HIPAA compliance piece, um, if you have a kid attending multiple, yes, I, we know that Melissa, we have um, since fixed that problem. Um, if you have a kid attending multiple weeks of different camps, so if they're den chiefing, it's carpenter, they're going to GSR one week and they're doing a, a, a week of Provo or a mini week of Provo, um, you do have to fill in the form three times because those are three different camps and uh, different sets of people have access to them. And so in order to make them continually be um, HIPAA compliant, we have to ask that you do it three times. All right, those are all my housekeeping pieces. So to Phil, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, thanks, Allison. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, as Allison said, I'm Phil Donovan, I'm the Vice President of Camping. Um, I know many of you. Um, it's good to see some new faces here tonight. Um, I wanna let you know that when summer camp ended, all the tents were taken down last year. Um, that's when um, our camp directors and their teams got to work on uh, 2023. So there has been no rest. Um, uh, about the third week of August, uh, the camp directors were sitting down with staff and talking about what went well during the summer, what needed improvement for 2023. And uh, we have an extensive list of both of those. So we're going to build on our successes and, and work on some of the things where we could do better. So um, we won't have all of the answers to all of your questions tonight. Uh, the purpose of the director's chats is to just start a conversation um, so that you know what we're thinking and we know what you're thinking about summer camp. So um, a lot of work is still getting done behind the scenes uh, for 2023. I'm pretty excited about um, getting back uh, to camp in June. So um, Allison mentioned uh, camp fees. The budget process for the Daniel Webster Council is, is ongoing right now. Um, that work should be wrapping up um, in the next week or so. Um, and out of that um, comes our camp fees. Last year we did have, as you recall, um, we did have a, uh, an increase in our fees. Um, there was some, some worry that other camps uh, were gonna be a little bit less expensive than the Daniel Webster Council camps. Um, this year, um, they're playing catch up and we're in better shape than they are um, because of the foresight uh, that our, our staff and board um, had to start, start working to make sure that um, we uh, could be sustainable. Um, in our in our financial position. So we are in good shape. I would anticipate if I was a unit leader, some kind of um, some kind of an increase, but it's too early to to know exactly what that's going to look like until we get all the final numbers put put into place. Um, we did have a couple of uh, surprises as we all have had in our household budgets over the last couple of months. Um, so we're taking a real real hard look at that. And our goal is to keep camp um, as affordable as possible for everyone so that everyone can enjoy um, a great summer camp experience. Um, as a reminder, um, Allison, uh, we were just talking a little bit before the meeting and uh, she reminded me that we will have um, 
camperships, so there will be some financial um, assistance available. Campership forms will be ready right after the holidays, around the first of the year. Um, last year we were, and the years passed, I got to admit, we were always a little uh, behind the eight ball in that. So um, that will start happening right after the first of the year to help you with your, your budgeting and uh, your discussions with, with your scouts and their families. Um, staffing is always an issue. It has been. Um, if, if you uh, are trying to run a business, you know that it's hard to find people and uh, summer camp is no different. Um, so if you know of uh, some, some people in your troop, some, um, who may be interested in becoming a member of our camp staff, please send them to the camp directors um, for an interview. And um, I'm sure that they would appreciate, appreciate that. Um, it is a challenge for us. Um, you know, when we're paying three or four cents an hour for camp staff, uh, it's hard to, it's hard to uh, compete with $22 at Dunkin' Donuts with a $200 signing bonus. But, um, I want everybody to remember that part of, uh, leadership development and, and the, the, uh, the, um, the, the spirit of volunteerism is still strong in scouting. So, uh, the experience you get as a summer camp staff member is, is unequaled any place else. So. Uh, we, we are taking a look at what, um, what our salaries will be for our, um, our camp staff, and uh, we're trying to take care of them to the best we can, but um, we're also mindful that that increases fees at some level, too. So we're, we're, uh, we're struggling and putting all of that into a pot and shaking it up, and uh, hopefully it'll come out to a, a happy medium for everybody. So with that, um, I want to, again, thank everybody for coming on, the, on, the, on this chat tonight. I know camp seems like it's a long ways away. It's about seven months away, I think, but um, it goes fast. It snuck up on us last year. All of a sudden we were talking about, wow, it's one month till, uh, till camp, one week till camp, and everybody got excited. So it's good to start this conversation early. Um, I encourage you to uh, bring as many uh, Cub Scouts and Scouts BSA to camp as possible because it is an awesome experience for them. And um, it's one of the main reasons that... Um, that people stay in scouting. Um, it's the outdoor adventures that, that they can have and uh, a week at summer camp is irreplaceable. So with that, um, I will say thank you once again and I'll turn it back to Allison and uh, we'll get going with some other detailed information. So unless there's any questions, I haven't been watching the chat at all. But. Thanks, Phil. Um, so as always, Mike Carlick likes to keep us on track with how long until camp. So there's 210 days until camp. He will tell us the countdown every every month that we join on these meetings. Right. So thank you. Thank you for that, Mike. And thank you for being uh, so consistent um, and allowing us to uh, keeping us on track with that. Um, the only other question was about um, registration and deposits and things like that um i think the only question i didn't answer was paulina's question about if we bring others so if you can trade them out that's not a big deal um so paulina was asking when do we start how can we start things like that um the system's not available yet we'll let you know when it is um my goal would be january 1 for that um however i would not start booking kids until you have a pretty set number um so that you don't have anybody bail out um and you can just keep adding on You'll always be able to add on. You will not always be able to take away. Once they've deposited, they are um, expected to be there. However, no, Paulina, never apologize for questions because I would much rather you ask a million questions ahead of time than Brendan and Garrett and I, who, like I legitimately approved an, a refund last week. So from 2022. So I'd rather you ask a million questions now so everything goes smoothly than continuing to deal with camp in November. Um, or from the previous camp in November. Um, so yeah, if there's someone who can um, fill their spot, we can we can move it around on the backside, I think. This is also our, our first year with the system. Obviously, it looks pretty and slick, but we haven't learned it yet. So please be patient with us when we get there. Um, we will know more about deadlines for early bird next month. Um, my email is in the chat. However, I'm happy to put it in there again. Um, These are all things out of the out of the uh, chat. Uh, any other questions for me or Phil or overall camping questions? If you have a question about your specific camp, Camp Carpenter or uh, programs at GSR, um, 
you will be, uh, you can ask those questions in the breakout rooms. You cannot reserve spots without names. I know it's I know it's new and different, but hopefully it is slicker and easier than the previous. So that's the goal. All right, if there are no further questions, we can open up the breakout rooms. Um, I will remain here to be supportive if you need something um, and everyone else will be broken out into the appropriate breakout rooms. I'm so excited to get started this year, y'all. If you have not already um, chosen a breakout room, uh, we have not already changed your name to choose a breakout room, please do that. I see one that's listed under GSR, but it should be CC. Actually, I'll just move her. CC. So if you have not changed your name to include which camp you'd like to join, please do that. Those of you who are still hanging out, um, we will move you to the right room appropriate as quickly as possible. Hannah, which room would you like to be in? Oh, sorry, I just saw it. That Hold on. 